Whoa, well, man. It felt good to finally get a win, Dolphin. So we're going to be going over what happened yesterday. Uh, goodness gracious. It felt good to finally have some sort of emotions on the field that weren't just, com or not field, I'm not on the field, uh, that we weren't just negative. It was just such an awesome thing to see our team fight back. There's going to be some things we need to talk about. A lot of bright spots. Uh, we'll go over the stats real quick. Tyler Huntley, 18 for 31, 194 and an interception. Jalen Wright, 13 for 86 yards. Raheem, the dream. Mostert, 19 for 80 yards, and then Devon Achan had 3 for 18 and then had to leave the game. Receiving Tyree Kill, 6 for 69, Jonu Smith, 5 for 62, Jalen Waddle, 4 for 46, and a boatload of drops. I mean, talk about that as well. Uh, Marcus May had five tackles, Brooks four tackles, and then uh, we had the one sack from Sealer. And that was basically it. So we are going to talk first about the offense and what we ended up seeing in this game, which was there's going to be a lot of bright spots in this game. I know people are going to say that this is the New England Patriots, but they have a good defense. You know, the New England Patriots don't have a bad defense. It's their offense that sucks. So what we're going to talk about is what we did this game. Now, I'll talk about this more in a later video, but what Jalen Wright and Raheem Mostert bring to this offense that I think we were missing and Mike McDaniel badly missed in the beginning of the season and kind of part of the reason why we were doing some of the things we were doing. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Tyler Huntley, completely different player this game. Um, I know there's still a lot of bad, like he is a backup quarterback that just got here, you know, a couple weeks ago, but m like worlds improved this game. You know, the thing was, is his passes were horrendous when he was playing. Obviously, it's the first eight days you've been with the team and you're playing with Tyree Hill and Jalen Wild, two fastest players. It's really hard to figure out where they are in your throwing motion. But today he seemed to be hitting better passes. Um... Jonu Smith was much more involved in this game. Now, one thing we have to clarify, and it's something that, you know, people tend to forget. When you're in the preseason and the offseason, you don't face being tackled that much, so you don't really gel. You don't have much time to practice in offense. And I know people are saying that, you know, you're in the offense for a significant... You have to be able to practice this, and you're not up to game speed and gelling until basically week six-ish and that's why you're starting to notice the offensive uptake where people are starting to score four or five touchdowns you know this this week was basically like an offensive rise and there's a reason for that because teams are starting to finally gel together you don't really know what you got until around this point in time uh so running the ball devon hn great player He's a really great, great player, or I would say good player. But what we saw today and what the continual problem with him is, is yes, he's very fast and he's explosive, but he's very small. And it's hard for him to do some of the same things that now we'll talk about this more so in a later video that Raheem Mostert and Jalen Wright can do. What we noticed in this game right now was when Raheem Mostert and Jalen Wright wasn't really playing, but I think that's going to change very soon, is we are running left and right. And of course, I also I blame it on Mike McDaniel, but on top of that, it's more so because Devon Achan can't really run in between the tackles and the guards because he's too small. He'll get brought down. And what we saw today was a clear difference with the running backs that we had. Jalen Wright and Raheem Mostert are significantly bitter, bigger than Devon Achan. And what that brings to the table, and this also has to do with Mike McDaniel, is, and I think he might have learned maybe from Baltimore, is lining up that fullback and allowing Moster and Jalen Wright to run directly forward. The run game was astronomically different than it was the entire season. Now, number one, that has to do with the offense gelling a little bit. But number two, it has to do with the type of player personnel that you have in the game. Much bigger players. Raheem Mostert, Jalen Wright, they were going for like five yards and it I think it's like 91 of 
percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel that watch the videos. Honestly, guys, if you just want to help me out, if you enjoy the videos, please do me that favor, like and subscribe. It helps me know that I'm making good content for you guys. If you guys do enjoy it, please do me that favor. Just hit that subscribe button. It wasn't even like a five yards empty tackle. It was like five yards getting hit each time. And the thing is, is with Devon Achan, he's too small to be able to do that. He can avoid tackles, but he's too small to push forward for that five. And those four, three, five yards that we're getting from Wright and Mostert, which Mostert coming back was like a godsend, but Jalen Wright's going to have a pretty big season this year is that puts you in more manageable situations. And what they kept doing the entire game was getting to second and like six, second and four, second and three, second and five, instead of when they had Devon Achan because he's so small, getting like second and 12, second and 11, second and nine, you know what I'm saying? So what they brought to the table was that push forward running back that can get you yards after contact, which, Devon H. can't do that. He can't do that to the ability that these two players can. And we saw the significant difference in the offense when Mostert was in and when Jalen Wright was in versus when Devon Achan was in. You're doing a lot of trick plays to get an open lane for Devon Achan, whereas Jalen Wright, you are literally, and Raheem Mostert, you're literally just taking the fullback, putting him in front of the player, and running the ball up the gut and pushing forward for about four or five yards. And that was the difference today. And the running game looked completely different. Now, again, like I said, Tyler Huntley did his thing. You know, let's sum this all up to Mike McDaniel right now. I think the last couple of videos I was saying to fire Mike McDaniel and that he wasn't, you know, a mounting kid. He was the one crappy coach that we got. I saw something from Mike McDaniel today that I haven't seen for a very long time. This was probably one of the most well-coached Mike McDaniel. Now, of course, I know it's the New England Patriots, but this was one of the most well-coached games by Mike McDaniel. Usually, I'm constantly finding all these stupid plays that he was doing. I don't really remember one stupid call. Every single call that he had was the right one. You know, every single call that Mike McDaniel had was the right call today. There was no stupid trickery. There was nothing nonsensical. And, and if you watch my video, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna say it like I said it then. It looked like we were just playing football. We weren't doing gadget, all of these different plays. We were just playing football, running the ball up the gut and passing the ball from play action. It looked wonderful. It looked like we were playing football. Tyler Huntley is not a great quarterback, 100%. But this is what makes good coaches. And Mike McDaniel showed me something that he can be a very good coach in this league if he gets out of his own way, which he did today, is you work with what you have, not with what you know. The players that you have on the field maximizing their strengths instead of trying to input yours. Of course, Tua is going to run this offense beautifully. But what we learned today is that you work with your strengths right now. And unfortunately, the offensive line is not great, but they are good at run blocking. And the way that Butch Berry has coached them, they are very good at run blocking. And more so running forward, run blocking forward. Even Liam Eikenberg looks good running forward towards the defender. The problem is, is what we were doing is a bunch of trick plays. Even the running plays that we were doing before was a lot of movement and motions. And people caught on to it. And what ended up happening, what I saw this game from Mike McDaniel, is he just played football. He just started playing football. Basics. Shanahan basics. Running the ball play action, short to intermediate route passes. That's what he was doing, making it easy for his quarterback and just continually running the ball. He never got away from it. He did. He, he played call pass plays in the right time, but for the most part, just kept running the ball. And it's something that we've all been pounding the table for, for a long time. But it looked like Mike McDaniel finally learned something. Now again, I'm gonna go into this more than what I am now, but I think with the personnel that you have at running back right now with Jalen Wright and Raheem Mostert, if Mike McDaniel's smart, 
you don't play Devon Achan as much in the way that you were now. Because what you saw right now is your team can be very good. We needed this win. And what we can do now is we can take what we did in this win and implement it further. And what I mean by that is now we're two and three. The Bills are three and two. The Jets are two and three. And of course, the Patriots are one and four. We have a division win. The Jets are two and three and the Bills are three and two, which means that we are tied for second place in the division. The NFL can quickly change. Tua is coming back two weeks from now. We're going to face the Colts. Now, regardless of what happens with the Colts, we will be two and four when Tua comes back, which means at this point in time, you pay Tua $200 million. What bright side scenario, but what can actually happen is that Tua can come back. Now, we needed this win. If we went one and, what is it, six, it would have been a completely different story. Now we're two and three. We can possibly get Tua back. If we go on a run with Tua, we can make the playoffs still. And this season can be one of the most incredible seasons that we've ever watched. And I'm calling it right now. I think that this is something that will happen. We play the Colts next. Mike McDaniel just learned something significant. He learned that if you just play simple, basic football, you can win these games with the team that you have. You don't have to go. I think, again, a lot of us see this where Mike McDaniel seems to want to be same. Tua and Mike McDaniel are almost the same type of person where they want to be the best so bad that they'll do things that are outside of the realm of what they need to do in order to prove this stuff. And what they need to do and what he saw today or what I think he saw and I hope that he saw is that if you just play the basics, you're really good at that. You're really good at designing plays. You're really good at designing run plays. You're really good at getting people open. If you play the basics of just running the ball, play action, short passes, you can do that with Tua, and you can win a lot of football games. That's what San Francisco does all the time with Brock Purdy. You can, win, you can go to the Super Bowl with a style like that. You don't need to be launching the ball 40 yards down the field every single time. If you can, great. But what we saw today in this game is that just like Tom Brady winning six Super Bowls, you can get three, four yards every single play and win a game like that. And you can do that for multiple games. And it won't get your players injured. It won't have all this crazy motion calls, fouls, and all that stuff from illegal motions and all that. It won't have that because it's basic football. And if Mike McDaniel continues to play basic football, we can possibly go into Tua coming back 3-3 three and three and almost tied for the division lead and have him prove why he's worth $200 million. Beautiful win today, guys. Fins up. God bless. Peace.